I'm Dr. Michael Broom, and I'm here to give you a brief summary of feline thyrotoxic crisis, otherwise known as thyroid storm. In human medicine, thyroid storm is a well-recognized condition of acute thyrotoxicosis in which the patient's metabolic, thermoregulatory, and cardiovascular systems are overwhelmed by the effects of excessive circulating thyroid hormone levels. While the cause of thyroid storm is unknown, multiple precipitating factors have been proposed. Hyperthyroid cats presenting in thyrotoxic crisis have clinical signs similar to those of human thyroid storm patients. Early recognition and prompt appropriate treatment of this life-threatening condition are essential to obtaining a favorable outcome. In humans, thyroid storm is defined as organ dysfunction and decompensation secondary to exposure to high concentrations of serum thyroid hormone. Its exact incidence in human and veterinary medicine is difficult to estimate because no definitive and universally accepted criteria exist for establishing a diagnosis. The mortality rate among human thyroid storm patients is approximately 30%. The mortality rate among feline thyroid storm patients is unknown, but it's likely similar. Recognition of thyroid storm through observation of compatible clinical signs and identification of predisposing factors is critical to reversing this potentially life-threatening syndrome. Although the exact causes of thyroid storm have not been defined, five pathophysiologic mechanisms have been proposed. Number one, high circulating levels of thyroid hormones. As a result, thyroid storm occurs more frequently in cats with chronic hyperthyroidism. Number two, rapid increases in thyroid hormone levels. Abrupt discontinuation of antithyroid medications or low iodine diets are a potential predisposing cause for thyroid storm. Number three, increased cellular sensitivity to thyroid hormones. Increased sensitivity to thyroid hormones can accompany numerous non-thyroidal illnesses, including infection and electrolyte imbalances. Number four, increased tissue sensitivity to sympathetic stimulation. Thyrotoxic cardiomyopathy, secondary to chronic poorly controlled hyperthyroidism, is an example of an increased tissue sensitivity to sympathetic stimulation. Number five, some precipitating event. In human medicine, precipitating events have been documented in a large majority of cases. The known precipitants of thyroid storm include thyroid and non-thyroid surgery, the physical manipulation of the thyroid gland at surgery can result in rapidly increased thyroid hormone levels. Infection and other non-thyroidal illness. These non-thyroidal illnesses may increase tissue sensitivity to sympathetic stimulation. Administration of iodine-containing agents. Large doses of elemental iodine, are, as are commonly administered during diagnostic imaging procedures like CAT scans, can also rapidly increase circulating thyroid hormone levels. Vigorous palpation of the thyroid. Once again, the physical manipulation of large thyroid tumors can result in rapidly increased thyroid hormone levels. Sudden withdrawal of antithyroid medication. Discontinuation of antithyroid medications or low iodine diets in patients with large thyroid tumors secondary to chronic hyperthyroidism may lead to rapid and marked thyroid hormone elevations. The clinical signs of thyroid storm reflect the severe increase in metabolism associated with marked thyrotoxicosis. The diagnosis of thyroid storm is based largely on observation of four major categories of clinical signs. Number one, central nervous system dysfunction, most commonly manifested as agitation, potentially progressing to seizures and even coma. Number two, fever. Number three, gastrointestinal and liver dysfunction. Number four, cardiovascular abnormalities ranging from sinus tachycardia to pulmonary edema and pleural effusion, secondary to congestive heart failure. Additional clinical signs may include hypertension, acute respiratory distress, dehydration and hypovolemia, as well as hypokalemic myopathy, predominantly characterized by extreme weakness and cervical ventroflexion. The same clinical signs are observed in patients with uncomplicated thyrotoxicosis, but to a much milder degree. The diagnosis of thyroid storm in human patients is often based on a history of hyperthyroidism and compatible clinical signs. 
and or a resolution of clinical signs with appropriate treatment. Therapy for patients experiencing a thyroid storm involves measures intended to address the following general pathophysiologic mechanisms. Number one, inhibition of thyroid hyperactivity. To transiently block the production of excessive levels of thyroid hormone, methimazole or other antithyroid medications, including carbimazole or propylthiouracil, are routinely administered. Rarely other drugs, including potassium iodate and iopinoic acid, may be used. Inhibition of the peripheral effects of thyroid hormone. To block the systemic effects of thyroid hormone, beta blockers like atenolol or propranolol are typically used. Number three, therapy to address the symptoms of thyroid storm. Cervical vent reflection attributed to both potassium and or thymine deficiency is commonly experienced by cats undergoing a thyrotoxic crisis. Hence, therapies including potassium gluconate and thymine supplementation are commonly utilized when treating cats with a presumptive diagnosis of thyroid storm. When correctly managed, even cats that have experienced thyroid storm can do well. Prompt resolution of thyrotoxicosis and administration of the appropriate symptomatic therapies will optimize the outcome in these patients. Nevertheless, the mortality of this condition is relatively high. Hence, the most important concept is the recognition and avoidance of the precipitating causes for this condition in the cat. In my experience, overwhelmingly the most common underlying cause responsible for the clinical syndrome of thyroid storm is the abrupt discontinuation of antithyroid medications in cats with chronic hyperthyroidism and large thyroid tumors. This combination leads to the rapid escalation of circulating thyroid hormone levels and is a well-established precipitant of thyroid storm. Cats with hyperthyroidism managed for a year or more on oral medication like methimazole or iodine-restricted diets like Hills YD may develop very large thyroid adenomas. A small percentage of these cats will even develop large thyroid carcinomas. The abrupt discontinuation of these therapies can lead to rapid and extreme increases in thyroid hormone levels, potentially inducing a thyrotoxic crisis. Clients scheduling cats for radioiodine therapy are usually advised to discontinue antithyroid medications for approximately one week prior to their admission appointment. To reduce the risk of thyrotoxic crisis in cats with large thyroid tumors, we advise clients with cats that have been managed with methimazole for more than one year or with pre-treatment T4 levels over 20 micrograms per deciliter to discontinue antithyroid medications for only one day prior to admission. Clients with hyperthyroid cats on diuretics for congestive heart failure are advised not to discontinue methimazole prior to admission for radioiodine therapy. In those situations where the abrupt discontinuation of antithyroid medication is indicated in patients with large thyroid tumors, the use of a beta blocker may be useful to reduce the effect of the rapidly escalating thyroid levels on target organs like the heart and the central nervous system.